Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a canopic jar and a canopic lid. So I have about two and a half pounds here. Um, you can get more um, if you want it or if you have challenges centering, but this is definitely gonna make, uh, you'll see how big it gets, but I would say, um, I don't know, five inch, six inch tall uh, jar, okay? So, just to go over some centering stuff, um, sit as close to the wheel as I can. I'm bracing my elbow into my hip so my whole body can get over top of the clay. And I'm just gonna be pushing forward and down. And I'm also going to squeeze it from the base up. If you have challenges squeezing, you can kind of make an indentation at the bottom and then squeeze at that point. And when you squeeze, obviously it rises because it has nowhere else to go. And then I'm gonna do the same technique I started with where I push down and forward at the same time. Okay, once I have it centered, take my hands off nice and easy. Um, I also want to have kind of a flatter top to begin with just because that's a nice way to start throwing. So just like most other forms on the wheel besides plates, it's a cylinder to start with and then you shape it. So I'm just lowering into the middle. If you do want to trim a foot on these, you're more than welcome to. It's not required. but. I am not, so I'm gonna go down, you know, so there's about three eighths of an inch, which is a little less than half. I'm gonna pull back towards my body while I'm also bracing it with my outside hand so I don't end up knocking it off center again. So I'm pulling it back into my hand there. Because I have a little bit more clay, it takes a little bit more strength to pull it back and over get a little bit of the water out on the inside of the pot just with my sponge and I'm also evening out the bottom so it looks nice and flat down there. I noticed some of your vases, you guys really need to start paying attention to the small details. Uh, the bottom of the pot, the practicing of centering. Um, don't just give up. If you don't center it right the first time, try again. Uh, don't settle for a pot that's not centered. Okay, so now I have it open. Just kind of want to see what you guys can see. I'm going to raise the walls. So I'm going to make like that talking hand. And because I'm right handed, I'm going to do it on this side of the clay. And I'm also going to back it up with this hand. Now, I am giving more pressure with my outside fingers than I am with the inside. And that's so I don't make it go out wide. Because I'm sure all of you know that that happens um, very easily. Okay, And I'm going to keep raising those walls until I get a good thickness which again is about three a seven inch, maybe a little bit um, thinner than that. You can see how slow I'm moving up the pot as the wheel is spinning. I release my pressure when I get to the top so I don't end up messing it up. So I still, not that you can see the inside, but I still have a lot of weight down here. Um, but I also wanna kind of start shaping the pot to make it have an inward um, part so that I can make a lid that it will sit on, on top of this form. So I'm going to push a fair amount at the bottom because like I said, I still have a fair amount of clay down there. I'm gonna release 
release my pressure when I get to the top again. A lot of times, you know, uh, you know, beginners or students who just haven't thrown that much, um, you always want to compress that lip, or even you know, me just compressing that lip gives it a lot of strength and stability. Um, and sometimes I'll do it after every pull. So there's a little bit of water down here. I'm gonna soak that up. So this is two and a half pounds and you can see how big it's getting. I didn't lose any clay um, in the process of centering though. So I'm using the sponge on the outside because I wanna keep it wet as I'm throwing but it's getting close to what I need. I'm gonna start shaping it, which will thin it out. So if you're stretching it outward, it thins out the clay. So with my inside hand, I'm really using almost this whole finger and the support of these fingers to press up against the wall. And also this hand kind of at the bottom to push inward to kind of get that rounded shape to come out. As I'm doing that, the wall is thinning out, but I'm also kind of raising it a little bit as well. A trick you can do to keep water on the outside of your pot and on the inside wall is if you hold your fingers up against it um, and put the water down your fingers, it will flow onto the actual sides of the pot. Okay, so I'm liking the shape pretty well, um, but I wanna make this top have that neck that I was talking about. Um, and the way that you do that, so I am going to collar it in. Um, so I want to create the collared in area, I can start it right here. So if you make an indentation, it does help to just keep your hands in one spot. And I'm just applying pressure just with these fingers. And then I'm going to slowly move up the neck to bring the whole thing in. And if you do it really quickly, uh, you can end up messing it up. As always, you can always mess it up at every process but um, another way I do it is I'm gonna push in right here um, and below it I'm pushing outward a little bit to make that form um, have those shoulders that I was talking about in class okay so I have that this still needs to be brought in because I want my lid to sit on top of my shoulders and not kind of overhang on the pot so it doesn't look fitting. This part of my pot is kind of thicker, so I am going to raise the walls just where the neck is. This is way too tall, so I will be cutting it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my needle tool. I only want this really to be about an inch tall um, you really wouldn't want it to be less than a, a half of an inch okay so this is probably about an inch at this point I'm just gonna shape it a little bit more and also use my rib to really get a nice roundness and to smooth out the surface So to make this have a nice ledge, you can see right now, it just kind of gradually goes into the neck. I want this to be straight up and down. Um, and I also want this area to have a really nice flat spot for the lid to sit. So one more thing, I am gonna shorten it a tiny bit. It's a little too tall. 
So just slowly cutting through that. I'm gonna compress the lip to make that nice and strong again. And then now, I told you guys you'd be using a wooden tool. So if you have one that is nice, has a perpendicular edge, this is what you want. And if you need one, we can borrow them. But all I'm gonna be doing is holding this upright against here and pulling back the neck a little bit and also pushing down a tiny bit on this shoulder here to again, get that really nice ledge that's flat and that the neck is straight up and down. So it's probably about a fourth of an inch um, of a ledge here where my lid would sit. I just want it to be a little bit thicker than that. So I want it to be about the thickness of the walls of my lid. Okay, so just pushing that down a tiny bit more. I want my craftsmanship right around that edge to be nice. If I can put up my... I'm just gonna take my middle rib and just clean that up so it's very cohesive and it just runs right into that ledge. Okay, so because I really want this to be super nice um, and I kind of hit it with my shirt, I'm just going to make sure that this is straight up and down um, and clean and I'm going to compress my lip one more time. Um, obviously, I have not done the wooden tool, so I'll try to show you that real quickly. Um, first thing I'm going to do is cut off a lot of this. So I'm holding my tool like this for right now, and I'm going into the bottom until it touches the bat. So mine was fairly thick down there. Yours might not be. So I'm gonna take my needle tool underneath that ring of clay, slide that off, and again, I'm going to just, I want this to be a really nice, thin, lifted bottom and it to just kind of flow right into the pot. So, really kind of digging in right at the base. All right. Okay, so now I have that. I can clean it up with a sponge, but for right now, I'm just gonna move on so I can show you the next step. So, <clears throat> these are called calipers, and what I want to do is measure the ledge, okay, or the neck, I should say, and I wanna measure it all the way down where it touches the ledge or the shoulder kind of area. So, my measurement there, this big, this is the same exact measurement, just shown in a different way, okay? So when I make my lid, I'm gonna be using that me measurement to really get a nice form-fitting lid. So I'm gonna put this on here, and what I'm gonna be making is a cylinder. Um, just literally a straight up and down short cylinder. So I'm gonna center it. Okay, so I want my mound of clay to be somewhat similar to the size of this, um, which it's pretty close already. So I'm gonna leave it there because when I stretch it open and back, it is gonna spread out a bit. So I'm gonna dig my well. And I do wanna leave, make sure 
that you leave three eighths of an inch or a little bit thicker because remember you're going to be building on top of this so think about this as the lid is upside down right now okay pull back towards my body the inside what I also want on the inside is it for it to be very perpendicular so it sits so nice on the top of the body of my piece okay so I'm just gonna continue to measure and measure just to make sure I'm accurate what I want is for this to actually fit down inside my pot okay so right now it's still a little bit too small so I'm gonna stretch it open a little bit It's just a wee bit small and I, this is kind of going fast for me in terms of like getting the measurement right pretty quickly so I don't want there to be a lot of wiggle room but it's okay to have a tiny bit uh, the other thing like I said I want this to be completely perpendicular so right now it just has a slight curve right on this inside edge so I'm just going to push it down and also with this hand I'm pulling or I'm pushing kind of inward a tiny bit and then making this really strong and straight. And then I, I measure even a few more times before I say yes this is done. Okay so up here it's still a little bit wide so I'm going to collar it in. Or it got a little bit wide, I should say. Um, the walls are kind of thick for me, so I'm just going to pull, do a pull. Um, realize you want your lid to be as tall as your neck or a little bit taller. You wouldn't want it to be shorter than your neck because then the neck would be exposed and it would look, it wouldn't look nice. All right, so I'm almost done. Just gonna bring it in a tiny bit. And I'm also going to do this. And I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna cut off the top just a tiny bit because it's pretty tall. Um, typically, I would measure, you know, just to make sure I'm, I can eyeball it though because I've done this many times that this height will fit my the top of my piece oh perfect okay so I just want to show you um, really quickly turn my wheel off what's cool is I can flip this upside down and then I can test it if I want to be brave but it's pretty wet, so I'm honestly not going to do that. So, voila, that's what you get. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys create. Thanks for watching.